Hello and welcome. My name is Bruce Bellows, Senior Land Use Planner for the City of St. Catharines. I would like to present to you study findings and draft recommendations for revisions to the City's Land Use Plan, changing the City's landscape. Triggered by the closure of a large industrial user and the potential redevelopment of what is now a mostly vacant 20 hectare, 50 acre brownfield site located on Ontario Street in the middle of the city, Council directed city staff to study the potential conversion of this industrial site to allow redevelopment of the lands for alternative uses, such as new housing opportunities, commercial, and mixed-use development. To convert these lands, or to redesignate them to another land use, requires an amendment to the city's official plan which is our overall land use plan. The official plan sets out the city's land use planning framework, structure, land use designations, policies, and use permissions across the municipality. And as you can see, the lands on Ontario Street are currently designated industrial, or what we call employment. By provincial legislation, the city's official plan and any amendments or changes to it must be consistent with the Provincial Policy Statement, the PPS, and all the various provincial land use plans and their policies, including the Greenbelt Plan, Place to Grow, the Niagara's Government Plan, as well as the Upper Tier Government Region of Niagara Official Plan. And there is a bit of a pecking order. The Regional Official Plan must be consistent with all the provincial policy, and the City's Official Plan must be consistent with both provincial policy and the regional plan. The official plan must also be consistent with growth forecasts for population and employment that are established by the province for each of the regional municipalities in Ontario. These are then further refined at the regional level and allocated to each of the local municipalities within their jurisdiction. For St. Catharines, the growth allocation is established through the Region of Niagara Official Plan. The Region is currently reviewing their official plan, and through that, they have established a growth forecast for the city, and among other matters, are also looking at designation of employment lands similar to what we're doing. We have worked collaboratively with each other's review, with the intent to feed our study results into their review. The region is also the final approval authority for any amendment to a local official plan. More specific to employment lands, the province establishes the long-term protection of employment areas as a key provincial interest. Official plans must define and designate employment areas for long-term protection for economic activities and employment job growth. And once established, there are quite strict conversion policies and to redesignate lands within those areas for alternative uses, such as residential. Any conversion of employment lands must also first be addressed through a comprehensive citywide land needs assessment, or what we call an LNA. The LNA must be consistent with a land needs methodology established by the province. It must also look at the future land needs for not just employment uses, but all other uses as well, such as residential, commercial, mixed use, and institutional development. And at the end of the day, the LNA must ensure that any land use changes do not compromise the city's ability to support and facilitate the accommodation of forecasted population growth, needed housing to accommodate that growth, and projected job growth by different sectors. As an example, if we change or convert some employment areas, how does that impact our ability to support projected employment job growth? Or if we redesignate certain residential areas to other uses, how does that impact our ability to accommodate needed future housing? The city has now completed our land needs assessment and here are the findings. Based on the provincial growth forecast and further refined by the region, 
The city is expected to grow by roughly 31,000 people by 2041 and requiring just over 14,000 new dwelling units to accommodate that growth. The city is also expected to accommodate for the provision of 18,000 new jobs during this time. The big question to be answered through the LNA is, can we accommodate this growth within our existing land use plan? And also, are there maybe opportunities to revise the existing plan to best support and facilitate the accommodation of both projected population and employment growth? The LNA looked at the areas where we permit and accommodate housing in the city. Our established residential neighborhoods, shown in yellow. There's both large and small vacant properties within these areas and opportunities for new, low, medium, and high density housing developments. There's also many small lot infill opportunities for redevelopment, replacement of the existing housing stock, and housing regeneration, as well as many opportunities for inclusion of accessory apartments. We looked at our mixed use areas and intensification corridors along our major roads where we allow both business and housing opportunities. Our downtown, which allows the highest concentration of mix and uses in the city, including low, medium, and high density housing opportunities. And we looked at our commercial areas as well, where our planning permissions allow for freestanding housing opportunities and adding dwelling units to upper floors of commercial plazas. Within all of these areas, we examine permitted housing types and densities on both vacant and occupied lands in order to determine the capacity and opportunities for new housing accommodation. Based on the findings of the LNA, the existing housing permissions and capacity within our current land use plan support the accommodation of projected population growth and housing need to 2041 and beyond. Turning to employment, as stated earlier, the city is projected to grow by 18,000 jobs to 2041. This forecast is broken down by different sectors. Office jobs, typically spread throughout the city in commercial areas and work from home, with major offices located in some of our employment areas and most concentrated in the downtown. Population-related jobs are retail and service commercial uses, our schools, Rock University, the hospital, and a whole host of other uses that serve the day-to-day -day and weekly needs of residents. Rural jobs, well, that's our agricultural jobs on our world-class agricultural lands. And the fourth sector, employment land, employment jobs, industrial jobs, manufacturing, warehousing, trucking terminals, storage, and the like, uses that are typically found in designated employment areas. And it is those areas and jobs that I would like to concentrate on right now. Our employment lands are shown in blue. Out of the total employment forecast of 18,000 jobs, 4,000 new jobs are projected on our employment lands. Just over 2,600 are your typical industrial type jobs, with the remaining being office and service commercial uses typically dispersed throughout employment areas and primarily located to provide service to employers and employees. Based on applying a standard density ratio of 48 jobs per hectare, the city requires 83 hectares of vacant employment lands to accommodate the employment land growth forecast of 4,000 jobs to 2,041. But where are the city's vacant employment lands? And where exactly do we accommodate those 4,000 jobs? Well, we have approximately 113 hectares of vacant employment lands. The bulk of these lands, 87 hectares, are concentrated in four large areas. The remaining 26 hectares of land is scattered throughout our employment lands on smaller parcels. We need 83 hectares of vacant land to support the employment land job growth forecast. 
This then provides opportunity. Opportunity to consider redesignating 30 hectares of land for alternative uses, such as residential or mixed use development. If to maintain those 26 hectares scattered throughout, this means that we can potentially convert 30 hectares of the 87 hectares of land concentrated in those four large areas. Through the LNA process, the city has received seven requests from landowners to convert both vacant and occupied employment lands for alternative uses. Together with the industrial site on Ontario Street, conversion requests equal 107 hectares of land, with 85 hectares of that on vacant lands. The city cannot accommodate all potential land conversions and still meet the employment land job forecast. If to accommodate all conversions, that would leave the city with only 28 hectares of vacant employment lands remaining, and well short of the 83 hectares needed to accommodate the employment land job forecast. More details of the potential conversion sites are provided in supporting materials on the Engage STC page. The quantitative analysis component of the LNA identifies opportunity to convert 30 hectares of vacant employment lands. But where? We have choices. And that then also requires a qualitative analysis. Through this qualitative analysis of the LNA, we looked at all of the conversion sites to assess matters related to property characteristics, location, size, compatibility of use, suitability, potential use conflicts, servicing, community integration, and synergies. How do they fit on site? And how do they fit within the community? The qualitative assessment is provided in the supporting materials on the Engage SDC page. Based on the quantitative and qualitative assessment of the LNA, staff offered the following draft recommendations for changes to the city's land use plan. Consistent with provincial policy, staff recommend defining and designating six employment areas in the city. In Port Weller, located east of the Welland Canal in the northeast corner of the city, the Hanover area located at Martindale Road in the UEW. The Hiscott Street area located just east of Ontario Street, south of the QEW. The area north and south of the QEW, centered around Bunting Road, Wellard Avenue, East Chester Avenue, and Cushman Road. Glendale Avenue, out by the Welland Canal, including the General Motors plant on the east side. And on the west side of the city, adjacent to the 4th Avenue Commercial Power Center, and south of the CN Railway. These areas contain approximately 83 hectares of vacant employment lands and enable the city to accommodate and support the growth forecast for employment land employment jobs. Staff also recommend the conversion and redesignation of two existing employment areas to a mixed use designation. The 10 hectares of vacant lands adjacent to and west of the NHS hospital site on 4th Avenue and the 20 hectare vacant site on Ontario Street. It is our opinion that both these sites provide for significant and appropriate opportunities for a mix of housing accommodation, office, and population related jobs. The exact mix of uses will be further refined through subsequent planning processes. Other revisions to the land use plan are recommended. These include redesignating the NHS hospital site on 4th Avenue and the Brock University lands and immediate vicinity from an employment land designation to an institutional designation. Existing uses on these sites are not typically employment land, employment jobs, but rather office and population related. These recommended revisions to the land use plan are being made in order to more appropriately recognize existing uses on these lands and to provide for their continued future accommodation. There are also a couple of other relatively more minor revisions recommended. These relate to providing a minor increase in the percentage of floor area an employment use may devote to providing for accessory population related and office uses. 
and also allowing for greater opportunities for regional destination-oriented retail warehouse uses to locate adjacent to the QEW. These recommendations are more clearly defined in supporting materials on the Engage SDC page. Based on the results of the LNA, staff are recommending significant revisions to an evolution of the city's land use plan. The proposed new land use plan for the city is before you. Changing the city landscape. And that concludes this presentation. Thank you.